Synchronous versus asynchronous. Who wins? Students decide. Hi, I'm Colm Dunphy from the Department of Computing and Maths at WIT, and I've created this presentation with my colleague Peter Windle, who works in the Centre for Technology Enhanced Learning at WIT. This is our third talk at the conference. Uh, you may have seen the earlier ones, including Having Great SX Online and Slack for Educators. Both of those, along with this talk, are informed by what we've learned on the Higher Diploma in Computer Science, which is a fully online programme which previously has run uh, the last four years face-to-face -face mode. We get a higher retention online than face-to-face, -face, and this programme is sponsored by Springboard Plus, which means the students' fees are paid for them. Statistics, 80 interviews with 37 offered places, 31 started, two formally withdrew. That means we have 29 active students, 24 of those passed, of which 15 were distinctions. It was selected as the pilot programme to identify good practice, improve the learning experience and maximise the quality of online delivery. Why? Well, suitability of the curriculum to online delivery, tech-savvy students open to using new tools and technologies, and the curriculum team are enthusiastic and have the right skill set. Here's the team made up of the curriculum team, the support team, and the admin team. For technology, we use what we call the tutor stack, five layers of technologies rather than just one big uh, VLE. And we can swap out these technologies in and out as needed. Delivery modes, we use both synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous live delivery, well, we had three four-week blocks of classes. Talks were done using Adobe Connect three uh, times a week at lunchtime. Uh, these talks were recorded for asynchronous playback later using Adobe Connect. But later, uh, we swapped out to OBS and YouTube Live instead. For lab support, we used the program Slack. And again, we students had three times a week with allocated times where they had access directly to the lecture. The asynchronous mode was for self-directed learning. We detailed notes and labs closely integrated with live online lectures. We used the flipped classroom approach with the materials uh, available at the start of each week. Adobe Connect recordings uh, were used for video. And later we changed or converted the Adobe Connect recordings to YouTube videos um, available in an unlisted channel, uh, which gave the students variable speed playback. It gave us embedding so we could include the videos inside the website and channel subscriptions, which led to notifications for the students when the YouTube videos were available. We ran a survey in the middle of the semester, week eight, uh, to investigate the accessibility of delivery modes offered, the suitability of class times, and to get some general feedback. Uh, the review was prompted by a CTEL newsletter uh, promoting Mayor's 12 Principles of Multimedia Teaching. We reflected on what we were doing, uh, and we found 11 of the 12 we agreed with, but the 12th uh, image principle and was a cause for concern. For our design, we designed an anonymous uh, survey created in Google Forms, Linked to the survey was uh, distributed via Slack. Uh, it took five to seven minutes to take the survey by the students. And we used Dr. Phil Race's approach to requesting feedback, uh, which means the students benefit from the feedback because uh, they're, they're still uh, taking the course. And it includes questions like stop doing and keep doing. So the findings, we got a high response rate, preferred delivery modes, presentation style, and timing of online sessions, and the importance of aesthetics. But we also got the unexpected. It generated class discussion, additional materials, elective options, valuable questions on contrasting wishes for methods of online delivery, and other feedback. So let's take a look at the results. 79% response rate, very high. Uh, for video delivery, 56% of students watch the videos later, not live. 35% watch them live, and replay the videos later. Only one person doesn't use video, and only one person watches live only. So we had 78% of students say they watch the videos more than once. 82% prefer to watch on YouTube 
than they do on Adobe Connect. And this is quite important for us. Lecture visibility in videos, 65% said it should be there. Additional 17% said just occasionally. So the opposite of Mayer's 12th principle is what we found. Mayer says you shouldn't have the lecture in the image being visible. Um, so earlier sessions on Slack introduced a video and then walked away from the podium. Uh, this was an experiment I'd done live here at the conference. And what I found was I got quite a few gasps and looks when I did walk away from the podium after pressing play. Uh, the dig from another speaker, the silence when the video finished, it's a bit unsettling for the audience to be just present at the introduction. So why does Mayer expect it to be different in online classes when we're not visible? Now, I thought I might have made a, a bit of a mess up, but I was uh, happy to find a Professor Martin Weller, who is a director at the OER Hub in the Open University, referenced the Slack talk in his keynote. So maybe it's OK for some. Pre-recorded versus live preferences. We found that 57% want a mixture of both, 26% like pre-recorded and 17% live. And the important message here is it's not all about the live. The video is just, if not more important. We also needed to find out about electives. So we had three modules. We weren't going to run all three. So um, we asked the students about it. Initially, it looked like um, only one module, mobile app development, was the, the favourite from, from the responses we were getting. However, uh, a respondent asked for more information. So we supplied it online to all. And what we ended up with at the end of the survey was an even spread. And now all of these modules will be offered. We also inquired about lunchtime clinics. We found that 22% would avail of a face-to-face -face lab session if offered, but 78% can't do face-to-face -face at all. And that was made up of 30% who would prefer to have it online, but 48% who just couldn't attend. So keep doing everything. Thought we were doing okay. As I said, keep being approachable, keep offering all electives, even as short, intense courses, and Keep doing live, um, feels more connected and they like the human contact. They also said keep doing the content f with engaging lectures, easy to follow notes and that the pace was just right. Keep doing videos, can watch on the commute. We can have our prefer shorter rather than longer videos. Keep doing YouTube so we can get the very speed playback. Uh, they play back nicely on mobile. And one student said the only way he could watch while at work was if he can play the videos in Opera, which Adobe Connect was incompatible with. And they, they also uh, wanted produced or pre-recorded videos. Keep doing Slack, separating questions and polls from live videos, quick responses, direct messages for contacting the lecturer and getting assistance from lecturers, and all communications are in one place told us to stop doing. A lot of people said nothing. It's fine as it is. But some people said stop doing long videos. We'd rather short ones. Some people said stop doing the live sessions because we're not available at the time they're running and stop publishing notes just before class. We also got some feedback on the labs, said we're unavailable at lab times. Um, support requests were always successful outcomes and that uh, the labs are really homework. Um, some people said they're not utilised, so materials explained well enough already. Generally, they were happy with the labs. And they gave some suggestions on how we might uh, improve them in the future. So in summary, for video, they said package it up shorter, uh, make the presenter visible, and there's an appetite for pre-produced videos. For live talks and lab sessions, um, really no time suits everyone. Some desire all materials to be made available at the start of the semester. But the big one is clear preference for an option to attend synchronous classes, but it must be available asynchronously too, preferably on YouTube or similar. Finally, feedback and results suggest we're doing pretty well. So synchronous versus asynchronous, who wins? Students decided the clear preference for option to attend synchronous class, but it must be available asynchronously too, preferably in YouTube or similar.